Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. It is free today and today only. Today we are talking about a simple preparedness concept, the beginning, the beginning of preparedness. I got an email from what sounded like a husband and a wife, or a husband and a wife who is now seeing the light of the preparedness world, the need for preparedness. Some people don't get it, guys. Some people don't think about it. Some people refuse to prepare. The concept to them is just too, it's too crazy to prepare for things that are too far out there, too far down the rabbit hole. Preparedness concept. I am simply wearing a seatbelt because it may or may not possibly save my life or prevent serious injury in case of an accident. An accident that I have not needed a seatbelt for ever, but I still wear one every day. Every time I get in the vehicle, I wear my seatbelt, even though I've never gotten in a wreck. How, what a, how stupid is that? I've never been in a wreck. Why do I need a seatbelt? Every day, I carry a firearm. Every day, I carry a firearm. I don't get in gunfights often, but I've carried a firearm every day for years. Preparedness concept. Preparedness concept, pretty simple. If you need it, you want to have it. So, getting back to the letter, the crux of the letter. Let me get out on this main road here, guys, and then it's all smooth sailing. The last time I showed a video, one of the times I showed a video of me turning off of a road onto another road, one of my buddies and subscribers to the channel <laughs> figured out where I lived. <laughs> it's pretty funny. That's how I met him. First time I told him to come over, he's like, I'm like, yeah, you want the address, man? He's like, I already know where you live. <laughs> it's good stuff. So, wife has decided, due to the craziness going on, inflated grocery prices, skyrocketing fuel prices. Our, our fuel price went over a dollar overnight the other day at one of one of the one of the gas stations that I go by over a dollar it's crazy it then dropped again so they must have been price gouging people but that it gave me a small heart attack war in Ukraine sanctions on Russia comments from Russia uh, comments from China right the the world stage is escalating and it is not looking super peaceful and that has repercussions and those repercussions are high high prices inflation of things and stuff so the question presented was where do you start if you are behind on preparedness and let's let's be honest guys if you are just now preparing if you're just now getting started you're so far behind you're way behind and you might not even be able to finish the race I don't know but that's no reason to give up, right? Start today uh, and try to gain as much ground on it as you can. But we're gonna start with the simple concept. My advice to getting started in preparedness, the best thing I think that you can do getting started in preparedness is community. Uh, more specifically, and we'll use the term small teams. Small teams, four, six, Maybe eight dudes, capable young bucks, um, and their families to boot, right? That is something that you should be aiming for. Not being alone, not being a lone wolf, uh, and then bringing your skill sets together. And there's so much, right? There's, I mean, we can go off into every caveat at this point, right? Like each. Each member could have their own skill set. Well, when you bring that to the team, it's a force multiplier. You don't need to know four different things when you've got three guys who know separate skills, right? They can teach you at any time. So you bring it to the team. You, you have it at your disposal. But you gotta build that team, and that team's gotta get built right. Um, what it should be, 
based off my experience, is it should be built off of trust. You should trust those people with your life because you may, in fact, just have to do that. Trust them with your life. And of course, with trust, you know, comes integrity, right? You gotta, you gotta make sure that the people that you're preparing with aren't out telling the world what you're doing, giving away all your cool secrets. You want to make sure that the person that you trust is, you know, is not gonna, is not gonna take advantage of you, or is not going to not pull her weight. That's a big thing, right? Pull your weight. Don't be the, don't be the weakest link in your Elgov. Small team. In our world, we call it an Elgoth, a little group of patriots. But, call it a small team, it's easier. It sounds scarier. Second criteria, and for a lot of people, this is kind of their first criteria, is location. You wanna have someone close to you, a neighbor, a couple of neighbors. Having a couple of neighbors who are on the same page, understanding the same concept, looking to achieve the same goal is probably optimal. You can build that trust with someone who's looking to do the same thing you're doing. You can build that trust with someone who's got the same outlook on it, the same goal. But if your team is spread out all over the place, and it might take them hours or even days to get to your location or for you to get to their location or whatever your guys' bug out plan is or bug in plan is, whatever the plan is to come together to rely on each other, location, timing, all that stuff is a factor. If fuel stations are empty, you better make sure that you can get to where you're going. If the grid's shut down, you might have vehicles all over the highway because they ran out of fuel, because they couldn't get fuel. These are just things that you've seen in disasters that have taken place. Look at Katrina. Uh, look what happens over in Iraq. Look what happens in, look what happens in all these countries that face a collapse or some sort of a turmoil to their day-to-day -day life, right? Your vehicle runs out of fuel wherever it runs out of fuel. If that's the middle of the roadway, well, you know, that's just where it, that's just where it's gonna sit. So location is huge. You'd hate for half your team to not show up because they can't get up the road because it's blocked. So for this video, guys, specifically, starting over, ground up, you're new to prepping, you've never done it before, you finally see the light, you're interested in it. Your wife's on board, your husband's on board, and I, I know there's wives out there that prep and the husbands don't get it and don't care. I'm, I know them. I've met them. They're real people, I get it. But, now that the team is on board, the husband and wife are on board, whatever the case may be, your next step is to find people who are like-minded. And while that step is taking place, you are beginning to prepare, right? Food, water, shelter, all the security, comms, communications is a huge one, greatly overlooked all the time. But we'll talk about it in another video. We're gonna go through these videos from the ground up for all of you who are just so far behind, you really, really need the help. Once your team is established, once you have members, you guys need to communicate with each other. What do you expect from each other? What is the goal of the group? At what point would the group no longer work together if need be? At what standard are you a member of the group? This is a big one. You might wanna have a standard for actually being able to join the group or have someone. And this, this is a good standard, this is good practice because it'll tell you right off the bat if your neighbor who talks about prepping listens to prepping podcasts, watches prepping YouTube videos, reads the magazine, all of it. Will he actually do the work? A lot of guys are all talk. A lot of guys know all the right answers, but don't implement it. A lot of guys are just lazy and they're like waiting for the big neon sign to be like, now is the time to prep. That was a long time ago. 
You need to make sure that you don't have anyone who is going to be a hindrance to you in your group. So by having a standard, let's say, let's say standard food, you're not in the group until you have a minimum of six months dry goods stored up, mylar bags in buckets, in the garage, for each member of the family. Maybe that's your standard. That's a low standard, just so you guys know where I, where I sit on that. But that's, there's the first step, right? If your neighbor, your neighbor Bob, if Bob shows you that, oh, I'm all about it. Look, I got a year supply for each one of my family members so far, and we're gonna build on some other stuff, and we're gonna continue to build that over time, because you just never know. Bob is now showing you that he's on board. He understands the concept. He knows what it takes to be a part of the group minimum standard. There's other standards, you guys. You can, you know, comps. You could create a standard that your that your members have to be a licensed ham operator. It's not hard to do. It takes a little practice. I did it. If I can do it, anyone else can do it. it takes a little practice. You pass a test. I think you pay 10 bucks, 15, I don't know. And you get your license. And then you start learning how to do it. Basic. And I would absolutely suggest that you try to recruit someone who's good at comms. At least one guy who can teach other people or at least one guy who can bail the rest of the group out who's not very good at comms. These are standards that you probably want to implement. Some kind of a standard that you want to implement. If you are the guy taking on taking on this first step responsibility, taking the lead. It's always hard to find someone who's gonna take the lead on these kinds of things. A lot of guys want to have it happen. A lot of guys wanna walk right into something that's taken place. A lot of guys wanna walk into something that's already built, that's great. They wanna, they wanna be a part of the A-team, but they don't wanna build the A-team. Uh, but someone needs to take lead on it. That person needs to be somewhat organized somewhat have have some bit of direction right the concepts that I'm giving you you just need to think think ahead think way ahead figure out how to get there and then create standards for it all right guys that is a good a fair amount of information for this video we'll continue to put out videos to help you guys out so if you're looking for preparedness info, if you want to send this video to someone you're thinking needs to be in your LGOP and you need me to talk them into it, I'm happy to help. There's nothing wrong with being prepared for possible outcomes. Totally acceptable behavior, I think. It's the world I live in up here and I have fun doing it. Good community, good people. Hit the subscribe button, share the video, and we will catch you on the next one.